Hello, my name is Ian Levine. I'm bringing you a trailer of 12 of my private Doctor Who projects, particularly Sharda, because everyone wants to see a, a clip of it, and I, so far I've shown nothing online because of the BBC copyright situation. I've decided to bring 12 of these projects to you in small clips, just for people to get a flavour for them. Now, without BBC permission, of course, I can't release them, and they can only come out if the BBC want to, which is not going to happen at the moment. Hopefully sometime in the future it will. But I just want to make it clear that we mean no harm, we're not trying to infringe any BBC copyright, we're not trying to do anything wrong, but people do want to see some of these, so I ask you to please bear with me and give me a chance to show 12 clips of what we're doing, because this is a lifetime love of mine. I've always wanted to bring these missing, rich episodes, part of Doctor Who's history, back to life. Ones that were either cancelled by strikes, or were cancelled weeks away from production, like Lost in the Dark Dimension, or were mooted to be released like The Eight Doctors and then were cancelled. Lots of things that we've done that are part of Doctor Who's rich tapestry. So please, watch these 12 clips from 12 different stories and enjoy them and hope, along with me, that sometime, eventually in the future, they will get released. This book, Doctor. Which book? This book? Oh, I've read it. It's rubbish. Then perhaps you would read it to me. I have a very boring reading voice. By the time I got to the bottom of the first page, you'd be asleep. I'd escape, and then where would you be? Read it to me. I presume you can't read Gallifrey, then? Like a native. Read it to me, Doctor. All right. Are you standing comfortably? I am. Then I'll sit down. K9. Mistress? Do you want to come out and be useful? This doesn't seem to be just a social visit after all. Affirmative, Mistress. My function is to assist you. Well, you can tell me how old this milk is for a start. <laughs> it has been in the stasis preserver for 30 years. It is perfectly fresh. Ah, hello there. What is it? I don't know. You are intruders. Well, actually, I'm dead, and this is Bristol. Actually, my name is Chris. You trespass on my lord's ship. You shall die! So much for strategy. All right, we'll do it your way. Come on. By all the sons. I hope we're not too late. What are you? Look. What? What do you see? Nothing. Air. Billions of atoms, spinning at random, expanding energy, running down, achieving nothing. Entropy, like the stars. But what is the one thing that stands against entropy, against random decay? Life! See how the atoms are arranged here. They have meaning, purpose. And what more meaning and purpose than in here? You do not understand me. Your mind is too limited. I know what you want to do, you old sly boots. You want to take over the universe, don't you? I've met your soul before. Any moment now, a mad glee will come over your eye and you'll start shouting, The universe shall be mine! How naive, Doctor. How pathetically limited your vision is. Limited? Take over the universe. How childish. Who could possibly want to take over the universe? Exactly. That's what I keep trying to tell people. It's a troublesome place, difficult to administer, and as a piece of real estate, it's worthless, because by definition, there's nowhere to sell it to. Such visions of her infants. My purpose is to fulfill the natural evolutionary goal of all life. Oh yes, 
With the aid of this sphere, I shall make the whole of creation merge into one single mind, one godlike entity. You will? The universe, Doctor, shall not, as you so crudely put it, be mine. The universe shall be me. The alchemists of the Middle Ages made transmutation their main aim in life. Ah, they didn't succeed, though. Well, even in the 20th century, it's still considered scientifically possible. Of course it's possible! Oh, well, I don't care whether it's possible or not. Whether it is or whether it isn't is beside the point. Oh, and what is the point, then? Why are the do Daleks doing this? They promised me! Daleks don't keep their promises. I see what you're trying to do, Doctor. You're trying to shake my faith. But I will be given the secret. Oh, well, it won't do you any good because you won't be able to use your secret. I'll see to that. There's no secret. Please, Jamie, do as it says. No one asked this human being. Or you will be exterminated. Yes, yes, we quite understand. You will be advised to do as they say. Oh, don't worry. The very thought of going near you revolts me. Mr. McCrillan. They seem to be prepared to protect you. Be warned. I appeal to you, Maxtable. It may still not be too late. If they are friends, help us. If you did, we could plan something. Try to escape. No! Well, at least for Victoria's sake. After what you did to her. No, I tell you, no! It's no good for Pa. He doesn't listen anymore. What do you want? A Dalek questioned an order again? We have searched without success. All Daleks must pass through the archway door. The Dalek with the human factor will then become a Dalek again will become as this human and I have become. Let it be done! I obey! Now lie still. I'll try and get help to you. No time for help. You saved my life, didn't you? Yes. A good life to save. Please, you... You must... Victoria... Don't worry about Victoria. We'll look after her. No time for me. The Emperor has commanded your destruction! Why? But your friends are fighting for you! Friends! Down there! Help them! Friends! Indeed, an historic moment in the history of the universe. We six from the outer galaxies, joining with the power from the solar system, the Daleks. The seven of us represent the greatest war force ever assembled. Conquest is assured. Mars. Venus! Jupiter! The moon colonies! They will all fall before our might, but the first of them will be Earth!
use physical violence, would you? <laughs> you don't know what you've let yourself in for. <laughs> ah, so you've left the key in the door. Well, well, <laughs> that's the first big mistake, isn't it? Yes. Very foolish. Very foolish indeed, young man. Well, now, if it's brain, or broad, rather, versus brain, <laughs> I've got you beaten from the start, young man. <laughs> They will be tried and found guilty as traitors to the solar system. After all, the woman is from Earth. I see this is nothing more than a small hiccup, that's all. Oh, Cardinal, do stop insulting our intelligence by attempting to cover up so much incompetence with fallow excuses. Indeed. We let you make all the plans. We trust you implicitly. And so we left all the details to you, and now look what's happened. We went through all the painstaking trouble of framing Flavia, and instead of you walking into the presidency unchallenged, the doctor returned and claimed it like a rug pulled from under our feet. And, as if that weren't insult enough, as if that weren't humiliating enough, who was the brilliant genius who had the doctor recalled to Gallifrey in the first place, I asked you? Yes, it was you, Cardinal. You were supposed to have him assassinated on arrival. Yes, but you botched that, didn't you? Oh, do be silent, the pair of you. Sound like a nattering old pair of washerwomen. Fear not, I shall take care of it. I have associates who will turn this misfortune into our advantage, I can assure you. The Right Honourable Ronaldo Trumpton from the Questable Epiglottic Consortium will be arriving at any moment. Now, are you sure you have your story straight this time? I do wish you wouldn't use the word straight. It's so demeaning for a rogue like myself, you know. Have you committed my new identity to memory? Yes, Prince. You're now Sextus Sejanus of the Empire of Marisol. Well remembered. And who are you now? Oh, now that's easy, and now we've changed it back. I am Ambassador Ethan Scruggs of the Galtron Mining Conglomerate. I'm impressed. So, let's meet this billionaire philanderer from the city of Questol and sell him the deeds to the Ventrarian Symphonic Edifice. Oh, and by the way, Sextus, don't forget about the Bayside water construction at the same time. As if I could. Ah, he comes now. Ah, Sextus Sejanus, I presume. My dear Ronaldo Trumpton, such a pleasure. Please allow me to present my colleague and financial advisor, Ambassador Ethan Scruggs of the Galatron Mining Conglomerate. Such a pleasure, my dear Sexton. And how is Questel at this time of year? As dreary as ever. But I come to make new acquisitions. And a little bird tells me that you have acquired the deeds to the Ventrarian Symphonic Edifice. Could such a glorious pinnacle of the seven hundred wonders of the universe ever come up for sale? Indeed, Your Eminence. The people whom I represent here have an urgent need to liquidize some of their assets for new investments. And so I have their instructions to dispose of certain assets, but only to the right buyer. My clients wouldn't want any riffraff getting their hands on such a prestigious monument to universal art. And you never know, Ronaldo, old boy, if you play your cards right, maybe Sextus will throw in the Bayside water construction for good measure. Surely not. Could such a pairing be possible? Oh, Sextus, please inform your clients that I am most deeply interested, and I guarantee to top any other bids. Oh, what a boon, to have the opportunity to own two such legendary acquisitions. My people will go positively orange with jealousy. You can always trust Sextus to Janus to broker the greatest properties on the intergalactic market today. Goodness me, Baron. What scam are you pulling this time? How dare you? My name is Sextus Sejanus of Marisol, and I'm representing the Galatron Mining Conglomerate to liquidate some of their property assets. 
You clearly have me mistaken for some awful common person. Oh, come off it. You're Baron Kadlebowski and Scruggs. I have never heard of such a person. But you did say your associate's name was Scruggs. Uh, an amazing uh, and uncanny coincidence. Now, do you see why I told you to change your name, you festering ignoramus? Uh, you have to forgive my dear colleague Sextus. He gets furious if anyone tries to confuse him with a lesser mortal's identity. Well, I don't like the sound of this. This is all very odd. I came here to make an acquisition. Oh, dear, dear, dear me. And what's dear Sextus trying to sell this time? The catacombs of Splendarus? The golden towers of Genalus? The arch of Zaprimonides? No, he's selling me the Ventrarian symphonic edifice. No, not the Ventrarian symphonic edifice. Is there no shame in the universe? Sir, it's Brigadier Sennefield from Unit and his team. Uh, come in. Uh, please be as quick as possible. I I'm terribly busy today, and to be honest, this is all a bit of an inconvenience. Thank you for seeing us so quickly. May I introduce Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart, retired, and his scientific advisor, the Doctor? Are you going to a fancy dress party? Do you know, I once stood in this room with a predecessor of yours. Winnie, I said, you must fight them on the beaches, I said. <laughs> Ahem. As I told your secretary, Livia Green has contacted us. Her husband has vanished. She's desperately worried. That's a police matter. Surely, surely they're looking after it. You don't seem very worried. He seemed well enough the last time I saw him. And when was that exactly? The last cabinet meeting. Really, I, I see no cause for alarm. It's the second instance of something odd happening to a cabinet minister in the last three days. We have evidence of <clears throat> hostile forces at large in London. I assure you this office is perfectly secure. You can't just shut the doors and hope they won't get in. They could even be impersonating old Smithers out there. He did look a bit suspicious. Really, Doctor, I think we can take care of ourselves. The Doctor has formidable experience in this field. You would do well to take notice. He and I are both convinced there is a very real threat to the security of this nation. Oh, very well then. I, I will at least endeavour to be vigilant. Now, excuse me. I really am busy. I must get on. Look up there, Alistair. An Auton energy sphere right at the top of the antenna. I can't see anything, Doctor. My eyes aren't what they used to be. What did they used to be? Uh, no, I mean... Here, use these. Can you see it now? Yes, Doctor, I can see it. How on earth are you going to remove it? You can't just climb up there. I have no choice. I must. Come back, man. You'll be killed. A cat has nine lives, Alistair. Yes, but you said you'd already used up eight and a half of them. Wish me luck. Be careful, Doctor. The Master! I might have guessed it. That's quite far enough. Stay where you are. Don't move. And put your hands up. But my dear Brigadier, how nice to see an old friend. No friend of mine. I suppose it all makes sense now. The Doctor suspected someone was helping the Autons. It had to be you. But even the Doctor was foolish enough to assume that you'd have learned from your past mistakes. He consoled himself with the thought that you'd never make the same mistake twice. But you obviously have done. You can't make a deal with these creatures. You must know that you can't trust them. Now, keep your hands up. Ah, help me! Help me! If you think I'm falling for that old trick, you must be a bigger fool than I gave you credit for. Help me! I'm dying! Ah. You're wasting your time. It's the oldest trick in the book. If you're fool enough to think I'm going to bend over and help you, you're sadly mistaken. Ah! I can't see! Ugh. Stupid, intransigent old fool. Now, Doctor, 
Time to deal with you once and for all. Oh, and I've left my umbrella in the TARDIS. This thing won't budge. It's jammed in so tightly, I can't get it to move. It has to move. I must not fail. Oh, Doctor, of course you must fail. You are doomed to fail. Destined to be the pawn sacrificed in a chess game. You! What are you doing here? Don't tell me you're behind all this mayhem. <laughs> of course, my dear Doctor. Oh, you have been slow on the uptake this time. Who else but me could have captured your beloved Miss Brown and substituted her with an Auton to kill you and the Brigadier? Well, you didn't do a very good job, did you? And may I ask, where is Perry? Safe and sound in the hands of my Auton servants. If you harm one hair on her head, I'll... You'll do nothing! You're all hot air, Doctor. We'll see about that. If I can just pull this thing free. Get away from that. I warn you. Oh, no. Not this time. Oh. You interfering jackanapes. I have suffered your calumnies for the very last time. <laughs> it's a long way down, Doctor. And you're going to feel every second of it as you fall to your doom. If you did more fighting and less gloating, you might get somewhere. But no, you always did like the sound of your own voice. <laughs> Ever since we left Gallifrey, I have vowed eternal vengeance. It may have taken centuries to achieve, but this time, Doctor, I finally have you exactly where I want you. Your demise will taste all the better as I watch you plunge to your death, racked in ignominious shame and defeat. Empty threats, Master! Not so. You cannot win against my superior brain power. Now let go, Doctor. You're going to fall. Your last seconds of life are right here. Right now! Oh, no, you don't! No! Die, Doctor! Die! <laughs> I think you're being used as a desperate cry for help. What? I don't understand. What do you mean? By who? A traveller. A, a colleague. I suppose I could call him a friend. It must be close to 20 years ago. I was still involved with UNIT. There was a call from Whitehall. There was a bad accident at the Pharos Center. They were using a radio telescope to monitor space waves. That sort of thing. Some poor chap fell off its highest gantry. The fall should have killed him instantly. But he was alive. And he was asking for me. It was the doctor. He should have regenerated. Something held him. He wouldn't let his body die. I gave him what sanctuary I could, in a unit hospital, but after a few days, he just disappeared. You're not making a lot of sense, Professor. Ah, yes, but I am. Bit by bit, your memory's coming back. Why else would you call me? Professor? Sorry? Don't worry. What is this place? Anywhere, nowhere. It's where Time Lords come to die. Well, this one at least. In a very short time, out 
just fade away, not even a memory. Time Lords? Sounds as though you live forever. Well, if this is what immortality is, I wouldn't recommend it. Death catches up with all of us eventually. Gallifreyans have an escape clause. <laughs> But nothing lasts forever. I owe you a bit of an explanation, don't I? You were one of my travelling companions. Ace by name. Ace by nature. By far the bravest rebel without a cause I've ever known. And you'd have left me. No, I wouldn't. It doesn't matter how, why, or when. They always do. Look amongst yourselves to see the answer. You know, I yearn to be like a human. I strive to achieve the likeness, the mannerisms. Now I find it repellent. I destroyed this planet once. My mistake was to question whether the genocide was necessary. Now I know the answer. I suggest you pray to whatever gods you believe in. You're about to find out whether they exist. Nobody gets out of here alive. Mr. Hawkspur, Mr. Hawkspur, wait. Be sure to make no exceptions. of sheltered peace and calm, almost invincible and remaining detached from all other races. We were content merely to observe. We kept our distance and became haughty and aloof, cold and unresponsive to the needs of others. But all this changed when the notorious Prydonian renegade, known only as the Doctor, stole a TARDIS and fled the Time Lord capital to explore the universe and to interfere in the affairs of others. Susan, it's far too dangerous. You must stay here. No, Grandfather, I shan't. There's nothing here for me if you leave. No reason for me to stay on Gallifrey. If you steal a TARDIS machine, you'll become a hunted fugitive. How am I supposed to live here after all of that? It's absolutely out of the question. You're not getting your own way this time, Grandfather. No, not this time. This time you're going to listen to me for a change. If you're leaving our home planet to go out there in the universe, I'm coming with you. You're not leaving me behind. I refuse. Plus, I couldn't bear it at all. The whole idea is just pure nonsense. So I'm coming with you whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, very well then, very well. But we'd better hurry. Madam President. Is that all you propose to do, Madam President? Simply observe? And what would you have me do? The Doctor is breaking, nay, shattering the laws of time. It, it's my belief that he has gone rogue. He should be arrested, incarcerated, interrogated. 
And executed? If necessary, yes. He should at least be brought back to Gallifrey and restrained for his own good. If he's become unbalanced, he may need our help. Without more knowledge, we might well do more harm than good. Later, perhaps. Not yet. Then you propose to do nothing? For the moment. And what of the danger to Gallifrey? Your hatred of the Doctor is well known to me, Ryoth, as are the reasons for it. It would be regrettable for you if I decided to delve into those reasons more deeply. Whatever mistakes I have made in the past, Madam President, my loyalty to you and to the High Council... ...is debatable, to say the least. What is it? What did she say to you? She begged me to take no further action for the present. But we're planning a formal protest to the High Council. Not yet. There are certain political considerations. We will act when the time is right. Report. I must thank you for this opportunity. For years, I have fought behind the scenes to restore law and order to Gallifrey. As Castellan, I tried my best to keep the peace. When we were threatened with alien invasion after alien invasion. Explain. We live in troubled times. The high council is run by old women and fools. It makes a mockery of our purpose and our destiny. We need one strong leader to restore order from the anarchy in which we find ourselves. I am that leader. With the death of Councillor Ryoth, I am the only possible choice. I urge you to depose this weak, degenerate, and indolent Flavia and install me as president in her place. We shall consider what you have said. So do not waste any more time, I beg of you. It is necessary. It is urgent. It is my manifest destiny. I shall be the greatest president who ever lived. Under your auspicious guidance and doing whatever it is that you require of me at any time. Day or night, you can always rely on Kellner to do the job. <laughs> Three questions for you. Who are you? How did you pull my TARDIS here? And what's all this about? <sighs> Doctor, welcome back to Dead Zen Monastery. Do I know you? The recognition of old friends is not always easy. Padma Sambhavar. But I saw you killed back in 1920. You shriveled and died when we defeated the Great Intelligence. How could you possibly still be here? It was a mere matter of ease for the Great Intelligence to reanimate me, Doctor. You will recall that on your last meeting you merely repelled the Intelligence back into space, not actually defeating it. You always knew that the day would come when you had your third encounter with the single greatest mind that ever existed in the entire cosmos. 
Yes, I've been dreading that day. But so much time has passed that it had gone out of my mind. Does this mean a third encounter with the Yeti? My Yeti are always ready to conquer your beloved planet Earth, Doctor. The last time we managed to cleanse the entire city of London of its verminous population and control it for our great purpose. Such a magnificent mind. It's a great pity that you never tried to achieve anything worthwhile instead of all those dreadful, tedious dreams of conquest. An eternity of drifting through space without form or corporeal existence has left me with an appetite for conquest and a desire to feel a solid form once again at my fingertips. The last time we met, I came within a scintilla of draining your mind completely, Doctor. And what is it you're planning this time? Oh, Doctor, if you think me so vacuous as to spill out all my plans to you like a stream of beads trickling out of a jar, then you are foolishly in error. See the pieces, Doctor. Come on. What are the chilies really for? A, a sort of a, a fascist hippie cult? The wicked world is full of lost children. The aimless, the lonely. We follow the dead send disciplines, which we share with our Chancellor. We really do care. Well, where is he then? Why can't I see him? The Chancellor sees no one. He has taken the path of truth. Victoria Waterfield. That's you on the list, isn't it, at the London event? Oh, you must have been really young. Considering I was born over 140 years ago. <laughs> Peanuts. I used to know someone who... Oh, never mind. Oh, sorry. I, I mean, um, no. You don't look a, a, a day over. I don't oh. feel a day <laughs> over. But... <laughs> You're late. I was delayed. The traffic in this computer business. Are you all right? Well, I can't complain. How are you? Look, this is stupid. I'll just go. I shouldn't have called you. Look, Kate, have you eaten? We could get a meal. No. Oh. All right. Hi. Uh, we'll, we'll sit here. I'm sorry, Dad. You look tired. I've had a difficult morning. Kate, it's been six years. What's the matter? Is it money? No, no, not especially. Your mother, then? No. I don't see her either. Look, I know this is crazy, but I'm being harassed. Goodbye. There are these chillies. Chillies? You know, children. Children? No, I mean they're called children from this New World techno cult. Two of them. They just sit opposite the boat all the time. Look, I'm being stupid. No. But they just won't go away. And they're frightening. And they're frightening me. What's wrong? Oh, the, uh, the TARDIS has landed. We're here. Mice and Island. Ah, oh, what is this place, Doctor? It must be ancient. This is the Temple of the Fourth. It's been abandoned for a long time. Oh, it's so peaceful. Does anyone live on this planet? Not anymore. Who are those statues of? They're Time Lords, like me, but long gone. Well, did you know them? Some of them. And what's that writing? It's an epitaph. An epitaph from a bygone age. If there be blood on my sword, let it be my own. Something like that. And what about the writing on the tablets? Oh, so many questions. But you told me to question everything. Oh, yes, forgive me, yes. Yes, it says, we serve the many. Till the many are one, till twilight falls and death comes to time.
Bedlow. We have something for you. Oh, my son, my son. He's safe and well, <laughs> unlike Tannis's guards, I hope. Now, you have your son, and I want something from you. I would give you anything if I could. We want the same thing. I want to stop Tannis from taking over the universe. Doctor, you brought me my child, for which I'm ever in your debt. However, due to factors beyond my control, I'm afraid there's been a change of circumstance. What do you mean? He means that our beloved leader and I have come to a little understanding, haven't we, Bedlow? He found out. I don't know how. Who are you? I'm a very, very bad man. Oh, Fred! Minister! Get out! Go away! I don't want to talk to you! Come down! Keep away from me! You must see reason! Tannis is running amok! I need your help! He's a time lord. Tannis! Tannis! Blood and guns and idiots marching in lines! I'm, I'm sick of it! Get out! Stop! Think what you're doing! This must stop! I don't care! I'm sick of it! I'm sick of watching them die! And talking to two-faced rubbish! We can stop the killing! Why do we have to sit by and watch? We can stop the pain! Why? Have you stopped the killing here? The pain below is strewn with bodies! How many killings did you stop? This is against everything we wear! It's not our place to interfere like this! Go back and leave me be! You've corrupted time! They're broadcasting on TV and radio and everything else. Oh, my God. S stick, stick them on. Earth, you have the honor of being addressed by General Tannis, Supreme Commander of the Defense Forces of the Kinesian Sons. You will kneel. Man. Greetings. This is the President of the United States. We welcome you to Earth in a spirit of peace and friendship. Mr. President, thank you. In return, we are willing to accept your total surrender. Um, what, uh, what, what now? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, could you, could you repeat that? Surrender! Surre Look, Mr. Tennis, there is uh, no need for this kind of talk. We extend our hand. Your Stone Age planet is surrounded by my fleet. I've just flattened another backward planet, and I rather feel like flattening yours. Now, think carefully. Would you like me to blow up a few cities to convince you? Uh, try stalling, sir? Um, sir, may I suggest that we arrange a meeting to... Gunship, prepare a tectonic bomb. What the hell is this? Plan asshole from outer space? Activate the missile defense system. Uh, we did, sir. What? It missed. There, that one on the island. What is that city? London, sir, a provincial capital. Then target that city. Sir, I think you misunderstand. Mm -hmm. We wish to enter into a friendship we will welcome you and your persons to our planet. Pilot, what is the population of the city of London? Around eight million, sir. Now, Mr. President, do I take it that you and your entire planet surrender? Sir, it's the Prime Minister from London, sir. In England, sir? Right, um... Mr. President, stand by. We have countermeasures. Countermeasures? What, what the hell kind of countermeasures? Gunship, fire tectonic bomb. Activate countermeasures. What was that? Unknown, sir. Sir, the targeting ship has been hit. Uh, confirm the gunship has been destroyed. Destroyed? By what? Sir, the targeting system is inactive. The bomb exploded on launch. What? Small shuttle fleet breaking cover from behind the moon, sir. They have no ship-to-ship -ship weaponry, sir. Pathetic. Enemy craft. You have the honor of being addressed by His Excellency General Tannis, Supreme Commander of the Defense Forces of the... Enemy craft, you have the misfortune of being addressed by the Brigadier. Now get out of my solar system. Of being addressed by the Brigadier. Now get out of my solar system.
Fantastic Chancellor Roth, bringing a notorious renegade back to Gallifrey. Every time he visits us, something disastrous happens. He's hardly a public hero. But for the Doctor, our lives might all be very different. Anyway, it becomes necessary. We have no choice but to deal with the Master. Why have I been summoned back home? I am Chancellor Roth, and this is my High Council colleague, Castellan Crandor. I do hope you have a very good reason for pulling me back here. The Master, and this time he really has taken over the Matrix. Well, go on then. I'm listening. The Master has created his own psychic world within the Matrix, a planet called Selvos. Upon this planet, he has created his own empire, a domain called the Determinant. That doesn't sound good at all. He has created psychic manifestations of all seven of your incarnations and is pitting them against dreamscape versions of their greatest foes. This is terrible. I must go and stop this at once. No, Doctor, this will not be possible. Why? Well, 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 what if not? As there are seven forms of yourselves already within the Matrix, if you yourself go in, the result will be cataclysmic. Temporal instability, which will unravel the causal nexus of all space and time. Well, if we don't fight him, the results will be just as bad. Fear not, Doctor. We have a plan. If this leaks out, then I shall deny all knowledge of this meeting. Baltok, ready to do whatever Emperor wishes. The great book of forthcomings tells us that a lord of time controls the music of the spheres. You must infiltrate his magical time machine and use it as a doorway to reach the great hall of the Prophet Albert. Why Baltok not just go directly? The Great Hall of the Prophet Albert. The, the Great Book of Forthcomings is very specific about this. It says this magical music can only be captured if you go through portal from Time Machine. This copes grasp in an invisible barrier. Without this, our great scheme cannot work. Your mission is to infiltrate the Lord of Time, uh, use his time machine to gain access to the Great Hall of the Prophet Albert, and there, steal the music. Do you understand the gravity of this task, Baltok? How, Baltok, get to Time Machine? We have prepared a time-space vortex for the task. Show him. Uh, this is the Lord of Time you must find. His Artron energy and biorhythms are programmed into the vortex access we have created here. Go find the Lord of Time, Bartok. Find him and gain access to the Great Hall. 